Welcome to Race Talk TV. This is a late model show. Special thanks to Access TV of Salina, BSB Manufacturing, Mom Construction, Salina Speedway, DJ Mean Dean, Flatlands Media, The Potts Family, and Karen Gebhardt. This is our one. Welcome to Race Talk TV on Salina Access TV. Bobby Potts and Bill Grit with you tonight. This is our late model show. Um, couple, couple, it's an hour long show. Uh, brought to you by Access TV. We'd like to thank our sponsors, of course, BSB Manufacturing, Salina Speedway, Mom Construction, DJ Mean Dean, Flatlands Media. We need to thank the Potts family for the refreshments tonight. Karen Gebhardt brought the sandwiches. Um, I haven't had one yet. Me neither. You have two. <laughs> no, I haven't. That's a, that's a first. <laughs> our guest tonight on the Late Model Show, um, Jay Neal, Chris Scratcher, Delbert Smith, Dan Smith, We've got Don Collins. These guys are about as good as it gets in the late model world. Bobby, how'd you do this? It's going to be a great show. I don't know how you rounded all these guys up. But, you, got them, uh, you got them all in one spot. We got them here. It's, it's going to be a good one, I think. This is our second show, Bob. You know, the first one we did was the Nostalgia Show. You put together another great show there. We had, uh, of course, your dad was here. Jerry, he had a, Jerry, had a great time, by the way. Oh, he sat there and, you know, well, Jerry Phillips was here. Of course, we had Mike use the announcer out of had Mike, AIDS I knew. retiring. I knew. I knew Mike would talk. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean that's what yeah that's what he's done for what forty two years. Yeah. So uh, yeah he did a great job also. And his ex wife story showed up a couple of times. Yeah that's they did wonderful they did. How that works, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. um, and of course you know and we had Jack Petty with us. Right. None of us none of us knew at the time that, that Jack was going in for a procedure whenever it happened and then shortly thereafter we lost him it just it's incredible. And it was we felt felt really really bad because we didn't get the thing put together for for him to see and um i we you know did the best we could not knowing i mean how do you know we had a piece um, of equipment fail it yeah. got fixed it's repaired we're using it tonight yeah um, but you know dave it sharia just, from flatlands media that produces this show did a fantastic job, a great job. He's, he's providing that family with a, a complete cd of that show because jack was pretty laid back, pretty talkative, oh, yeah. and, he, and him and your dad had a great time. We, we yeah. just let those two talk for the longest time. I know it, they'd, uh, yep, they had a good time. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we yeah. did it. Glad I'm really, did. you know, it almost didn't happen, Bobby. It, it really almost didn't happen. When, <laughs> yeah, that, when yeah. the piece of equipment filled in, the, right before we were getting ready to do this thing, we had to make a decision, and I'm yeah. glad we did it. Oh, I am too. I am and, too. And it's, right been, and it's been met with uh, some success on uh, Access TV. It's, they, they like what it's, what, how it worked and how it played out, so that's a good thing. I want to thank everybody that's in the crowd tonight, and again, you guys can talk and amongst yourselves, it's fine, and if you have questions, get them to the guy with the headset. We'll be glad to get them over, too. Questions <laughs> over here. Um, you know, let's get started. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're ready to do it. Um, starting off, um, got to give a big special thanks to Jay Neal with BSB for, uh, first of all, driving from Wichita. I know all of you guys actually yeah. Drove from out of town, so first of all, gotta thanks you guys for coming. Uh, Jay, let's kind of uh, start out. I know you you actually raced a car for a few years. Um, a long time ago. I know. Yeah, you and I talked a little bit. I actually didn't know you drove, but um, you did drive a little bit, and yeah. um, then you kind of got into uh, building chassis components. So, uh, yeah. Let's hear your story. Yeah, yeah it was kind of a. It's kind of an odd deal because we raced for a guy there in Wellington and we really had the means to have anything we wanted. But the guy that kind of helped take care of the cars was the other way, wouldn't spend a dime. <laughs> you know, so our another sponsor guy, he drove. So we had really all the money back in the day. We had all the money you'd want, oh, wow. but we couldn't spend it. You know, so we really started building stuff out of needs. You know, it was kind of, we needed it or we wanted it, you know, so we built it, yeah. I built it, you know, and then uh, I've always kind of had that, you know, if you're going to do it, you're going to got you're going to kind of do it, make money, you know, you, <laughs> with that attitude. And um, so I was building stuff and trying to sell it and, you know, and, and really our business and our product have really developed around making something better, you know, fixing the problem. And back in the late 90s, you know, there was a lot of problems with a lot of product, you mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, a lot of race cars, and, you know, we just fixed them problems, you know, and it just turned into a, to a great business, you know. And I know I, I do a little bit of traveling in the summertime, and all the tracks that I go to, um, 
you, you always see cars with BSB stickers on them. I know you've uh, you got your name out there quite a ways. In you know it's it's hard to do and it's hard to know. You know, I mean, it seems like you know it seems like you see a lot of the competitor stuff. You know, and and I know we were looking through Speedway through one of the magazines one time and. I told my wife, I said, you know, this is going to catch up to us because there was like 15 people in there had our fire suits on, you know, and I said, when, when they figure out how much free advertisement we're getting, <laughs> I said, they're going to get on that deal, you yeah. know, and, but yeah, we've had, I mean, we've had, you know, a lot of great drivers drive for us. Um, we still do. Uh, we've had a lot of people that were nobodies that ended up being really good drivers, you know, so. One name that comes to mind right off the top of my head is Kyle Strickler. I mean, yeah. being the Super Nationals winner at Boone Speedway. Yeah. And, and when he started, you know, a friend of ours called and said, this kid's got some talent, you know, and and I kind of, we've always got along good, and me and him just kind of tick, you know, I mean, as, if he was closer, uh, you know, I think we'd have a special relationship because we, we do work very good together. You know, we think like, and you know, you don't have to tell him but one, about one time, and he's, okay, we're gonna do that, you know, so. And it's nice, you know, I mean, a lot of guys, you know, they're, they're questioning, you know, but Kyle's that way, you know, I mean, it just, but, and there's guys out there like that, you know, and, and I like to work with him, you know, good. people, and. You know, not only being a, of course, we got a couple of your shocks here on display, um, not only building shocks, but um, go through some of the stuff. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the bird cages and all the yeah. I mean, we do and, we do all the suspension stuff, you know. And and when we first started, mostly smaller pieces, and it was well when we first started, I was building stuff at work. <laughs> so you know, we had an hour lunch and 15 minute break, and when we could talk them into staying after work, I'd stay after work, you know. And but uh, so I mean, we we started small. I mean, me and my wife, one of our first dates was making close up kits in the garage. Really? You know? <laughs> she peeled plastic for eight hours, you know. Oh. And yeah, I mean, without her, I couldn't do, you know. So she's a big part of it, and. And when people call down there, you know, they talk to her quite a bit. You know, she answers the phones and does all her bookkeeping and stuff, but. And BSB so. is in Wellington. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah many people, started, you, how many people do you employ now? Uh, we're, we float around a little bit, but we're in that 10 to 12 area. Okay. You know, but. Is there any particular class of car that you really like to work with? I mean, I know you make things for everything, but is there just one class of car that really stands out? Well, the modified stuff, you know, probably does right now. I mean, you know, we we really grew in that modified class, and and we we probably ha had an opportunity to grow first in the late model deal, mm -hmm. and probably just not being on top of it enough, you know, to understand where we stood in the market. Because when we really started with the aluminum stuff, for the late models, we had a piece that was way, way better than what was out there. But I remember the old... We uh, just didn't market it good enough. And who thought of the name of bird cages for those things? Because that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, explain to, the, yeah, explain to the audience. Um, I mean, if you can, I, I was, I was kind of wishing you would bring one, but uh, what, it, what does the bird cage well, actually do? You know, the bird cage hooks on the rear end, and then there's four link rods or rods that attach to the bird cage that go to the chassis. So the bird cages actually give the rear end the ability to steer. So these cars, you know, back when I raced, we had leaf spring cars. And they they turn good enough, but they don't they want to go forward. Uh -huh. You know they don't want to go around. <laughs> and, and now that everything's gotten so fast and has changed, the cars really need to go around the racetrack. You know they need to not slide a tire. You know and they need to stay hooked up to the track. And the bird cages are a big part of it. And you know, not only do you steer the car with the front end, but you're steering yeah. the car with the back end a lot also. Yeah. And and it, you know it's taken some time, but. You know, guys are figuring it out, and and it's part of what's making you know the sport faster. And, and it's 
getting down to the, you know the small details. So it's it's you know we talk about at work you know <clears throat> how the bearings put in the in the bird cage. You know they started out steel on steel with some grease in them, and then they kind of migrated to a nylon, and now they're on full bearings mm -hmm. and. and and how the bearing goes in to uh, the birdcage determines how well it works in the slick. You know, so we've even looked at some of our stuff, you know, and realized that, you know, we're not putting the bearing in from the same direction that we're boring it. Hmm. You know, so, and it needs to be because that's the mounting surface. Uh -huh. So uh, we, we try really hard to do it right. You know, we really do. And put a lot of effort into that and it shows up in the slick. You know, so, and I feel like that's where we've always been better. And, and you know, we was, the sport was getting to a point where motors were so big and it was so hard to hook up and it was, you know, it was becoming very delicate and every bit of traction mattered. And our product was really, really, really shined in that condition. And the crate motor deal slowed it down a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. It's created other issues, you know. <laughs> kind of had to go to work again. Huh? Yeah, and, and you know, really, you gotta you, you race 25, 30 years like some of these guys have, and then all of a sudden you realize, you know, what we're talking about traction in a whole different way, you know, and we don't need more drive; we need more speed, mm -hmm. and it, it's come a different, a is different that, approach. Is that where your your shock program is? kind of stepped up a little bit since the crate motor came Well, out. and yeah, the, I think we've grown, you know, at the same time, but um, as the tracks got slicker and it got, and the motors got bigger actually, you know, it got harder to, to hook up and the shock program really kicked in then. So, you know, it's was, it was about keeping load on the tire and, and, and keeping the car in attitude and posture and and, and, you know, I could see it coming, and that's why I wanted to get in the shock market, you know. And, mm -hmm. and at the same time, it was, you know, we kind of, the sport was kind of going through a phase where he's picking up a lot of manufacturers, and a lot of people wanted to build parts, you know. So, I, you know, I thought, you know, as a company, we need to move, you know, forward in what we do, and, and that's why we started doing shocks, you yeah. know. You know, it's something I felt like, you know, not everybody would want to do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and some days I wonder. <laughs> you know? but it's like, I mean, it's like racing, you know, it's, it's tough, you know. I mean, everybody thinks, you know, these guys are going out and just having a big old party on the weekend, you know. But there's a ton of work involved, you know. Uh, these guys spend a majority, you know, especially like this group that's here. I mean, they spend majority of their life thinking about racing, you know, or racing, you know, and and that's good for us. <laughs> that's, <laughs> good for, that's good for us. But yep. That's what we do too. I mean, we're not a company that sells stuff. You know, we do, we sell parts, but you know, if you can't make somebody better or faster, or it's, uh, you know, that's, I'm not good at marketing, you know, we're good at helping, mm -hmm. so. I think that's got to be tough to be on the other end of that phone call when a guy's car doesn't work on, on the weekends. It is. <laughs> it is. It what is. I, I mean. Do? What do I have to do to be dealt um, with the or <laughs> You know, sometimes you get blamed a lot and, and some of that's going away. You know, people seem like they're. I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, it used to be it was your fault no matter what happened, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it is tough when, you know, like Chris here has been running extremely good. And, and you know, I, I, I see a lot of it is, you know, I mean, the car makes a difference, but a lot of it's in the driver. Kratzer. He's the only guy I know that works on a carpet on his car in his shop. Uh, it's mean, like this one. Yep. Yeah, it is, it is just about like, like this one, isn't it? If you're a comfortable car, it, it pays you back yeah. on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. It's taking care of that car. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably got air conditioner in there and everything. <laughs> the car's living pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You do air conditioning in that shop, don't you? Chris? I do. I do. <laughs> just window air conditioner, but hey, it keeps hey, it cool. As long as that air is cool. That's right. Don, you guys got your old hot rod sitting on a carpet in the air conditioning? Got the air conditioning, but haven't got to the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 
you know, Bobby, Don brought us the crate engine that's on the end of the table here. <laughs> yeah. Let's, I'm uh, sure there's a story about let's, that. Let's hear about your crate engine story, Don. Well, we were in open engines for a long time, and this year we were changing our program, and some friends of mine and I were discussing that uh, a crate, we was going to a crate engine. And uh, they said, well, what does that consist of? I said, well, it's just an engine that comes from Chevrolet. And I said, you run it just like it is. And they said, well, does it come in a crate? I said, well, yeah, it's sort of spree, but that's... So I went on about two or three days, and well, I'm at the man for coffee, and they said, well, we've got this crate engine taken care of for you, so <laughs> it's gonna be here in a couple of days. And knowing them, well, I was pretty sure that this was not gonna be anything that was gonna be. <laughs> and two days later, they come up with, a, they brought me a crate engine. As you see it, <laughs> so it's been kind of a conversation piece ever since. That's pretty cool. And uh, you know, it's kind of, and they keep asking me how it's running. And <laughs> want to keep, you know, keep track of it, but, I, but I doubt that they ever figure it's going to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got it right there, and there's yep. a picture. There's a picture of of one of your cars right there. I do need to thank you know you guys for bringing over the pictures. Of course, uh, Dusty Wigger gave us some pictures that we're going to put up through the show from time to time tonight, and uh, Gary Cornelison from Good Old Racing. You know, Don, you were one of the last ones to come on board with the crate thing. How are you liking it so far? It's different. It's uh, it's not quite like I figured it would be. Uh, it has some it has some possibilities, and as the Full eight mile engine got more and more expensive. This is going to make it back to where it's for, affordable for for some people that it grew away from. And one reason why we're running it this year, and probably in the few future, we was having to travel so far, and uh, we was running like to us it was quite a ways. I suppose to other people it wouldn't be, but. We've flown over a thousand miles a weekend this this year to run, and you take the expense of the fuel, um, and add it all up. Why it, it just wasn't feasible, and I end up driving the furthest, and I kind of got tired of getting home at oh four four thirty five <laughs> six nine o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning, you know. <laughs> And so I said, you know, maybe we ought to look at this a little bit. Now, if we lived down in the uh, southeastern part of Kansas, uh, over in Missouri, you could go down there and run full late miles three, four nights a week. But uh, I don't live there. And uh, a lot of these are small tracks that are, uh, oh, they're paying about the same as what's a great engine programs here play but uh, and a lot of them are buying motors that oh coming off of the main line people like just running they're moving up better engines and these are some of these engines so it's uh, it's just kind of a, it's actually kind of another class of late model you know and a lot of them guys run their own weekly shows there and then they go ahead and run on the bigger groups so, no, but Don, it looks promising, and you know we're we're not just satisfied with what we're doing. Your family's, you and your brother, and of course your dad, when he's still here. You guys have been in this sport for a long time. How many years have you been doing this? This will be our 56th season. 56 years. We started. <laughs> oh, it. <clears throat> well, I, we started. I started racing go karts and ran those for a few years, and ran a, a uh, drag car for a couple of years, well, actually four years, and that wasn't really anything we need uh, enjoyed doing, you know. <laughs> and so, the last year we ran we ran a drag car in the spring, and so I decided we was going to quit. And I had a friend that was renting a house from me. I had a welder and torches and a lot of stuff for shop. He come over, he said, they're gonna start running some, uh, they call them late models then, but they was, about all was late models, but it was the bodies they were using. And so he come over and 
asked me, son, I need you to help put roll cage in this car for Are me. we getting close to that? Before, Pardon? Before that, before that yeah, even. Yeah, they right? were before that. Yeah, okay. They were running real close to the jalopy class. I'm not <laughs> kidding. But anyway, they thought they we went fast, you know, like oily yeah. brakes and, and that kind of thing, you know, they thought they went fast. But anyway, he come over and, and asked me if I'd help him build one, and he said, yeah. He said, I said, well, when are you going to start? Well, I'd like to start on tonight. <laughs> I said, well, bring it over. We'll see what we got. <laughs> He shows up with a big pile of pipe. I said, when are you planning on racing this? He said, Sunday. I said, you got to be kidding me. This is like on Monday night. But we got it lined out, and we got it going, and then... Is that your car going? Yeah. Is that is. you? Yeah. Huh? Was that no. you in it? No. Okay. No. No. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay. That's... Uh, that's one. I guess that's kind of one of the miracles we went through racing. We'll talk about that. You're just okay. Saying. Anyway, well, we ran that car and I helped him. Now I told him I wouldn't go to the races with him because I was quitting. Well, I ended up going. And when I came home that night, why? Well, I called a guy and, and had a a '62 uh, Chevrolet four door sedan, and I bought it. And I called another guy and got the engine. And so two weeks later, we had. What they call late models in, I've had one ever since. So, wow. You know, the first car I ever that I remember seeing of yours was it a blue, um, blue color? Maybe it could have been green. It was an well, old, old Nova? That's the first one okay. that I remember seeing. We ran that there, for that so. one there. Well, <clears throat> that one there. Okay. And you know, we built that car. It was built on fifty-five Chevrolet frame. And when it was ready to go to the track, now, those wheels on the front, that's all we had we could get on the trailer, so that's what we used. But <laughs> we, uh, it had wheels like on the back and the tires. And it laid, without a driver in it, it weighed, uh, it weighed about 2,400 pounds. Really? And that was unbelievable for back the, yeah. then. It had, had center steering. We made a center steering set up with, it had no chains in it, it was all, uh, rack and racks and that, and it could, you could adjust the, the speed of the steering, and you could adjust. I mean, it had so many adjustments on. It. Nobody knew what they were for, and they didn't have no ideas, you know. But they sure looked good. <laughs> but so who drove that? I did. You drove that car, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, about all I can say about it, it went around the track more or less. <laughs> but we ran it about four or five years. And uh, we had a lot of fun with it, and uh, it was uh, a lot of memories. Uh, Built it behind a Barron's Hotel in a little squeaky building, about 15 by 25, and uh, spent a lot of hours with it. But anyway, and that's one. That's you've only got two other cars that was ever blue. And I'm not kidding you, it seemed like it was, it was a dent magnet. You'd put it on the track and somebody always run into it, always with it. So finally the guy said, it, it was after we went to the, the, the uh, Nova, or the, that was a Chevy too, but the Nova like this. And we went to that and we painted it the same color. The same old story, man. Of course, it currently couldn't have been the driver, but anyway. Uh, anyway, when somebody said, well, why don't we change colors on it? I said, maybe that's what's the matter. Yep. So that car there was all blue and lettered and everything. We took it to track and there wasn't a corner on it that was banged down. So we brought it home, repainted it, Relettered it, and ever since the car's been some. No, one year we decided to go back to the try a blue car, and we had an accident with it right off the bat. And after the, my mother hadn't seen the car, and after the race she come down there and she said, "I don't know what you guys are thinking about." He said, you know, you can't run blue cars. You better get the color change. <laughs> we took it home and, and we put another body on it. So. <laughs> you got that blue right off of there, right? But that was the end of the blue oh, car. Yeah. Huh. But, I was going to say, I always thought 
Green was bad, but evidently blue is bad too. If you look at it, it's got kind of green cast to it. <laughs> and that, and that goes a little further than that. I had to pick up the same color. <laughs> And they got run into it. Every place I took, I could just leave it set there. Somebody ran into it. I don't have no blue pickups. <laughs> I'm not superstitious, but that happened. So. Hmm. Yeah, you know, we raced it. There's the blue one there. Uh huh. We raced the family for a long time. Uh, and it don't only just include my Denny and I and our dad. Uh, all my brothers and sisters, or my sisters and that, they became very close fans, and it was a pretty, pretty good family deal. So after you quit driving yourself, um, go through some of the drivers. You've had you've had quite a few drivers since you got out. Of the the guy by the name of Greg Holbert drove for us for seven years, and he drove up until uh, 1971, and then. Uh, giant of a man drove for us, Howard, Sp Howard Spittler. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that was driving, when you've seen the series of pictures there, he's the one that was driving it then. And he drove for us for three years, and uh, he had some boys coming up, and they were doing things together, so he decided that he'd, he'd go a different direction. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, then Shelby Stinson drove for us, and he drove for us. Uh, <coughs> he drove for us nine years, I believe. And we had some good success with Shelby. And then he decided he wanted to drive a sprint car, and he had done that before. And but still, we were close. I mean, we all went to races together. And then Lonnie Smith drove for us for a year, and. We had a good year with Lonnie. I think we won five or six features. Lonnie was a good driver, and he was somebody you could relate to. And uh, we had a good time, but Lonnie went on to go back and run his own car again, mm -hmm. which uh, I don't blame him. We didn't blame him a bit. And then Dean Woods drove for us. Dean, uh, and in there, I think there was a couple times that Delbert drove a race or two for us, or else he used an engine when I might have ran Lonnie's car. But anyway, we were kind of together there for a little bit. And then, uh, and then Dean Woods drove for us for five years. And you know, you can't. Some, somebody will ask you, "Well, who was the best driver you had?" <laughs> well. You got to take in consideration. All through this span, cars was changing, suspension was changing, and it was just a continuous situation. So to pick out any one driver was kind of hard to do. But uh, then uh, Ted Martin drove for us for 12 years, and we won, won a lot of races, had a lot of fun, went a lot of places, and the same thing happened there. He had some boys growing up, and mm -hmm. wife wasn't too enthusiastic about it. <laughs> and uh, you can remember, Bill will remember back when he come and bought the first car from me. And yes. I don't know if you remember what I told him or not, but I told him, I said, Bill, if this isn't a family deal, you better forget it, because it won't work. I mean, you can't be having it, you can't have that hassle there. It takes so much time. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it does. And it, everybody needs to be involved in it. Ted drove for us for twelve years, and then Gary drove for us for five years. And under all them, I don't maybe maybe one of them was left with a, a bad feeling, but it didn't last very long. And now. Uh, uh, Jimmy Seagray is driving for us, and he drove a couple shows last year. The first show he drove for us was not too successful. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that and, happen? <laughs> <laughs> cars don't run good when they're on their tops. <laughs> <laughs> but but Jimmy, anyway, it wasn't actually. Uh, and each driver, the car's different. You have to, you, you totally, it's, 
It's like the, them and the car have to have the same personality. You have to adjust that, and it's it's just it's just totally different. And one guy might want a tight car, one guy might want a loose car, and uh, then one guy wants to complain about however the car is. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, but anyway, it's uh, and it's interesting. And as car owners, you have to change too. You know, you get a car set up for a guy, and then you change the driver. Well, he needs this and he needs that. And it's not necessarily just thinking he needs it. It, it has to work for him. And just like, it's just like a seat in a car. Every driver has got to have their own seat and it's got to fit them. Yep. And that ma mental attitude of what he thinks about the car and how it works is very, very important. It's huge. It's very important. I remember you, after, after I bought that first car from you, you watched me race it one time and you told me that uh, the car was trying to tell me something and I wasn't listening to it. That's right. <laughs> I remembered that. Yeah. <laughs> and there were some years in there that we bought and sold a lot of cars. I haven't raced all these cars, but I've owned 87 cars 87 over the years. 87 cars. Bought and sold them. Wow. So, That's a lot of cars. One of mine was in there. <laughs> it was. Well, yeah. You got one. I yeah. Got one. <laughs> but that was my dad checking it out. I don't dad. know what he was checking. But he, was doing, <laughs> he was doing some Every time we it. brought it in, the first thing we had to do was take the hood off from it, and he had to look it all over. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> which, which, that was his thing, and, and uh, it was a good deal. But, and I miss him being there. You know, uh, Dave's going through the pictures here. Um, let's see if we can find that. Uh, the picture of the Belleville. Yeah, what is the what is the story deal. behind that? Let's. Uh, He's getting take it. Take it. Take us through. Uh, take us through that night at Belleville. Pardon. Take us through that night at Belleville. He's going to. Well. He's coming up on it here. Howard, there we go. Howard had a had a wreck, a bad wreck at Belleville. Some years before he drove for me. Belleville was always an issue with him. And at that point there, you saw him on the rail, and this is, and you, and you saw him rode the rail, and then by the time we got to the car, when I got when I got there, I figured he's probably dead. Uh, I didn't see the way the car went over and rolled and twisted. Well, when we got there, that's the scene we saw. We, and he they had him out there on the ground. They're up there working with him. We didn't know exactly what condition he was in. But you see the tube of six that went through the car? That's not part of the car. Uh, that's not part of the car. No, that's not part of the car. <laughs> that tube of six went through the floor pan, up between his legs, crossed here, his chest, and wow. out the back. And right beside his head. Whoa. Yeah. Right beside his head, his helmet, and everything. <clears throat> and I'm not kidding you, he never got a scratch from it. Wow. Not one scratch. And when I seen that was through there, I knew he was dead. I mean, how could that happen? But it, uh, and when you look at it there, it don't look like it's through the, compart the driver's compartment, but it was. And uh, I asked him later, I said, how'd you get out of there? Because it had to be right across him. Oh, yeah. And he says, uh, don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted out, I'll bet. So, anyway. Yeah. But, and we were very fortunate, very lucky. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, the car wasn't as bad as she was. I was just going to ask, was. was the car wasn't hurt that bad? No, no it really wasn't hurt that's that good. bad, and it's unbelievable. That's, huh. that's and, something uh, else I learned from Don, is uh, before you go cutting on anything after a wreck like that, see if you can fix it. That's right. Yep. So you put that car back together? Yeah. Yeah, we ran it. Well, in fact, Shelby ran it six Four years for us after that. Really? Hmm. And then we wow. bought then we bought the first uh, uh, bullet, and uh, that car was made by uh, Charlie Lang, in Wichita. Uh huh. It was copied off a of Howell chassis. It, it was a good car. We ran a lot of years. Charlie had Probably some good more years than what we should have. Charlie had some good ideas back yes, in the day. Yes, he did. And Charlie was a good driver. Uh, he was a good. He was a good person to know. Yeah. Wasn't he, Delbert? Yes, he was. 
picture in that that picture right there uh, got a picture of my buddy Greg Ward. <clears throat> yep, right, right there in the two X. Yeah, that's Greg Ward there in front of us. Yep. Where did and that and that was the end of uh, Where did the two by six come from? They the come out of the guardrail or, or they come guard, out of the fence? The guardrail was. They had a fence board fence above the guardrail, didn't they? That's where the yeah there was wood a portion from. of it, and that was a, that was the end. They just left a portion of it because it's kind of a symbol of how the track been because. It used to have a, a wooden fence all the way around it. Yep. And they just had a portion of it, and then after that, it, it was all taken down. Mm. Yep. So. Wow. Would have never thought that that went through the car. Pardon? You would have never thought that that would have went through the car like that. No, no. When we came over there, I knew he was dead because how did that get through the car without, <laughs> without <laughs> killing somebody? You know what I mean? And uh, it was a long walk from the top of that fence down to where he was. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Mm. Yeah. Not kidding you. Yeah. But we've had a ton of wrecks, quite a few wrecks. Been real fortunate. Knocking on wood, we've never had anybody hurt real serious. And we hope we don't, and I hope nobody else does. You've exactly. had some exactly. had some accidents getting to the track too, huh? <laughs> like <laughs> losing your car. I had trouble or... losing cars one year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ever lose your car? The year that Lonnie drove for us. He had the car come off down on uh, West Street in Wichita, <laughs> and then that's a busy street. Yeah, I mean probably one of the, probably the busiest streets in Wichita. <laughs> How it came off there, went across the traffic, never hit nothing except a poor old tree standing out there. <laughs> 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 it didn't really hurt it that bad. <laughs> so well, that was that was early in the spring. And about mid-season, we were going to Hutchison to race, and we had we had an enclosed trailer. You've seen a picture of it. I think well, I might be mistaken, but I think that was the first enclosed trailer used in Kansas, or at least around here. Anyway, we were going up the ramp off of 135 onto the 61 highway, and the guy was riding with us. He said, uh, "Who else has got a red and white race car?" <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> he said, "There's one behind us." <laughs> no, he said, "It's it's crossing a it's crossing a, t a four lane." <laughs> Looked in the mirror, and sure enough, how it happened, I don't know. But when we come up that ramp, the door came down on the trailer. <laughs> the car ran out of the trailer, went across the four lane, down to the medium, over the other ones, and through the fence. And I want to tell you something: mm -hmm. a red and white race car is not hard to find in a green wheat field. I guarantee you. <laughs> no, probably and not. It is, we got in, started it up, fired right up, and loaded up and went to Hutchison race. The only thing it did was bent it a little bit. Wow. So, and we had a pretty good night after that was all taken oh, care really? of. <laughs> Usually on them Jeez. kind of nights you want to turn around and go yeah. home, but but yeah, that was kind of a bad year. We had trouble losing cars. <laughs> I thought your dad was the only one that lost race cars. Yeah, we lost a couple. Yeah, it's kind of a funny feeling. Right <laughs> 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 it's kind of funny. Feeling. I think probably the thing that was more scary was somebody coming from the other direction and hit it, hit it. And, and, yep. and hurt them. But yep. Yep. fortunate was that nobody was there. Yep. Chris, you ever lost a race car? I have not. Knock wow. on wood. I don't plan on either. Me either. Me either. No, I haven't. I know Delbert has. I've heard Mike Packins talk about them losing one huh. one time. But. Don, how'd you come up with the number seven? Seven C. Well, actually, we started out with nine. When I raced go cars, I raced nine. And then when we started coming to Salina, uh, wasn't any, all the rest of the numbers are basically gone. No. So we picked up seven, and okay. that's what we, and that's what we, no real particular number or reason for it, you know, other than that that number, nobody had that. <laughs> and then later on, you started la adding letters to them so you could get, so you could keep your numbers. Mm -hmm. When we go to tracks, and for another number, is that seven, like seven or 92 or what it was, they just want to come over and cross your number out and put some other number in. Well, <laughs> by the time we started putting letters now on, that stopped all that. 
Delbert, Dan, I guess it's you guys' turn back there, mm -hmm. huh? We've kind of been running through some pictures. I know we ran across a couple of you guys. Um, first of all, how's your, how's your season going? Um, guys doing okay? Hit and miss. Hit and miss. Yep, yep, we're, we're going to get there. I know uh, you're, you just got a brand new car here maybe a month ago. Um, yeah, I think we figured out. Maybe four or five times. Yeah, we're getting better. It came from uh, where? It's from uh, Trackstar out of Cuba, Alabama. Alabama? Yep. You went down there and picked it up and raced it down there? Yep, we did. We went to uh, Magnolia Speedway, uh, Columbus, Mississippi, and ran it the first night there with them and had a pretty good night. And we're, we're getting there a little yep. bit of time. Okay. I know, um, of course, you're employed by BSB. Yep. Um, What's your, what's your job? What do you do there? We we do it all. There's, there's really, I mean, none of us really have a job title. It's yeah. just whatever happens at the time, you just step up and do it. I step mean, that's just it. the way we keep things going. And I know Dan, um, not sure. I know you worked there for a while. Are I you there? I worked there. I moved away okay. uh, two years ago. I, w I work out of an office in Beloit doing online sales for Precise Racing and Hoosier Tire. Okay. Cool. And uh, how's your season going? Uh, unlike his, it's not hit or miss. I think I've hit everything but the you, lottery. You've so missed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we'll get it turned around. Just uh, it's, it's hard. Uh, the competition level is so high. If you're off a it's little getting bit, better, isn't it? it turns into a lot on the racetrack. Uh, in the crate racing, you can't you can't give anybody anything. So if your car is not helping you at all, it just makes that much worse. And you get back there and you get in positions where you're trying too hard. And, and bad things happen when you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, know, you, you no, guys no, came on. No, sorry, Bobby. No, you guys came on board the crate engine thing pretty quick. Um, you still believe that's the right direction to go? I think, uh, like Don was saying, in this area, I think if late models are going to stay around, it's going to be a crate. You know, and I think uh, it made it more affordable for some of the tracks to have late models. The purses are more in line with uh, the cost of our engines. Before I, we were a little upside down, it made it tougher, as he said. But uh, they've been really reliable. I've been impressed, and, and they're a lot of fun to race. I mean, you're, you're up on the wheel. You've for you guys go. that are out front, they're fun to race. For me at the back, it's well, not quite so much fun sometimes. You're getting there. I've, <laughs> I've seen your car. It's looking better. You're getting there. <laughs> yeah. What made you switch to another car? I just, I don't know. I was just ready for a change, and, and we do a lot of business with uh, Mike down in, sure. in Alabama. And I mean, that makes sense. 95% of his business is 604 crates, so I felt like he, you know, he would be uh, able to help me more and give me some more feedback. And I mean, down where they're at, the tracks are a lot slicker. So I think if things get slicker around here, I. I I've got a good piece. It's just I'm struggling when there's a little moisture, and we'll get there. He's he's working with us. I talk to him about every day, so you know I think that's what it is. And you know we've still got our other stuff, and uh, <laughs> I'll run whatever it takes. So it, it, <laughs> you know it's you know NCRA has um, taken on the crate thing along with the uh, Naismith. Um, is that working out? Working out I think better. so. Yeah, it's going to yeah. help. Uh, you know, the Naismith deal uh, lets us run sort of like IMCA. You know, they take your best 14 nights and they've got a $20,000 point fund. It pays 10,000 to win the points. And with the added shows from NCRA, it it gives us a better chance from racing the guys down south because they start in April and your points go from April to September. And before we were getting. 14 to 19 shows and they may run 30 some shows and so they can throw out their worst and we were just barely getting to our uh, bad nights and right now I think the way it sits uh, we've got uh, f well there's two of us in the top 10 and four in the top 20 so really? we're good we can we can get there if we can just get get our 14 shows in and start knocking off the bad nights and I 
I think that with NCRA, they have a nice point fund too, and then Tommy's shows help us race for that weekly point fund. So, mm -hmm. and I think you'll see it grow. More and more guys, I think there was some new cars uh, Friday night at Salina, mm -hmm. so I yeah. think there's guys that are moving out of the street stock class and some of that and, and getting crates, and it's mm -hmm. helping some guys get in into it that wouldn't have before. You know, Chris, last year you, uh, you had a good season last year. I don't know how many wins you had, but as far as doing all that, you took a little, you wanted to actually find out how fast you really were, and you took off and took a little trip down south somewhere and raced against the current point leader. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that trip? Yeah, um, it's kind of like Delbert saying, we're you know, kind of shorthanded on shows here compared to those guys. Right. And we were off a week, and uh, we thought, well, let's go to Houston, Texas, and race against, uh, at that time, was the weekly point leader. I think he ended up winning the $10,000 first place point fund. And uh, so we went down there, and uh, they run on D55s was our only difference. They run on a harder tire. I see. And I think we ran third down there, and uh, uh, it was it was fun. Did you have to run the D55? Yeah. Yeah, we had to run the to D55. Run the, to run the show? Yep. Let's talk, guys, for a few minutes about fuel. You guys, you know, a couple of you <laughs> have made the switch to E85. You don't buy that. You can buy it at the pump, but you guys, where's, where's the racer get it at? Does he buy it at the pump or do you buy, buy it from I the... I buy mine at the pump. You don't? I do. You do? Mine actually comes from, uh, I think there's an ethanol in plant in Scandia. Sells E85? Yeah. We just take it over there and fill I get my quick shop in uh, Mays, 53rd and Mays Road. Really? Okay. I think the only advantage to uh, buying it out of a barrel from a fuel supplier would be consistency. Sure. Uh, but you still have to watch it because it may not be what they think it is. You know, the days when I raced alcohol, um, alcohol would draw moisture if you didn't take care of it, didn't seal the drum up tight. I learned that lesson the hard way. Um, does you have, they have the same problems with this stuff or is there not enough? You just mainly got to keep keep up with the percentages because you'll get it. I mean, we've seen it as high as 90 and as low as 70 out of the pump. So you just got to have a checker and keep it within the rules and you'll be fine. You know, well, I, it doesn't, I don't think it really gives you uh, any more horsepower, but the cars will run cooler and I think it does give it a little more torque. Okay. What all's a guy got to go through to switch over to that? I mean, you, mainly the carburetor. Just the carburetor? Yeah. Yep. Volumes or anything like the old days with alcohol, you don't need more? Or... No, your fuel pressure stays about the same as you were on gas. And, and burn rates. Close to closer to gas than it is to methanol. Yeah. Change plugs or anything like that? No. Nope. Oh. No. You burn a little more, but not, you know, maybe 15, 20% more than you did. So you get a little more torque and the engine runs cooler. And it's the not price. Terrible. I mean, price is two bucks a very gallon. agreeable. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> Chris, there's your old hot rod right there. Yep, that's, uh, looks like maybe last year. He you drags that know? pedestal around with him, too, everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Well, you you can't bring the carpet to the track. I was just going <laughs> to say, no, 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 I would love to have the carpet there. at the track, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, uh, well, that's what track mats are for, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that same car you got this year? Yeah, that's a 2013 Barry Wright that we've had for uh, a couple of years. Okay. How'd you yeah. find that car? Uh, well, I found it on uh, on racing junk, actually, but... I knew what I wanted because I was going down to see Larry McDaniels and been looking to buy a, a new late model. Didn't know what kind of chassis I wanted. Is that it there? That's or it the there. Yeah. Yeah. But I stopped by Barry Wright's shop going to see Larry McDaniels and uh, very nice guy. Just liked the people, liked how he, you know, talked to you. You could talk to him about anything. He's not hard to get a hold of. Uh, and he's been around late model racing a long time. He's a very sharp guy. Uh, but I bought it from a guy named Ronnie Lee Hollingsworth in Alabama and uh, went and picked it up and brought it home. What car is that? That's not, that's no, still that's, GRT, uh, isn't it? That's the old GRT. It's it's old GRT. GRT I bought from Delbert. It's oh. a, like 04 maybe? Yeah, it's an 04. GRT by Phillips. Huh. Yeah. I think 
other than that Barry Wright, uh, well, I, I know I bought at least two cars from Delbert, and they've both been real good cars, actually. So. Do you still have that car? I do. I do. Uh, it's probably going to be sold here in the next day or so. I had a guy, two Are guys looking, looking at, at it. it. Yeah. Yep. Where are they going to take it and race it? Uh, Hutchinson. Yeah, from Hutchinson's looking at it. Good. So you're going to race with us? Yep. Oh, yeah. Now, that's an old picture there. there. I don't know where that came from. That was, oh, uh, gosh, what was the guy's name that owned that car? My dad. Uh, Pat French. Pat French. There you yep. go. My dad drove that car a few times also. Yep. Pat yep. French from French Engine Service in Nest City, I believe. Yep. How'd, you, how'd you get your start? I started because my dad raced, you know, and he didn't want me to race because he thought it was, you know, waste of money and time and tried to steer me away from it but you know I couldn't really do it so I started out in the thumper class and uh, kind of worked went from that to uh, I bought uh, my first GRT from Delbert it was a uh, I don't know what year that was 95 maybe probably 96 yeah somewhere around there still babysitting <laughs> yeah, he knows more about it. It was a good car, though. Very good car. I still got to take care of him every, every week. I got to do something for him. <laughs> He's so not you, kidding either. He does. <laughs> Did you go racing with your dad a lot then? Yeah, when I was a kid, you know, I remember going all the time. Do you remember? Do you remember the night? Oh at, gosh! It was at Fun Valley when they right after they had, you know, redone the place, and. Your dad went off the back straightaway, and there was a tree. Hit the motorcycle ramp, I think? There was a, well, there was a tree that had a big Y in it. Uh -huh. And somehow his car come off the ground and landed right in the Y of that. I don't remember that, that tree. Part, but I remember him hitting the yeah. motorcycle jump off the, <laughs> they had a motocross track behind yeah. the racetrack. Yep. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> they were uh, not built quite as well back then either. So, no. <laughs> you still have some open engine stuff, but you're liking the crate thing, aren't you? I do like the crate. I mean, you know, anytime you can race, drive the crap out of it, and it just keeps on running. I mean, no matter what you do to it, almost. In fact, at uh, Thunder Hill, I pulled off the track and lost the oil pressure. I had no oil pressure, and shut it off quickly. Uh, had a had a had sucked the uh, oil filter shut took the oil filter off filled the new one with uh, oil put it on and still going st still going oh, so wow. and when you can go around Belleville like we do you know flat footed and they just I mean so far honestly they're indestructible to me so <laughs> a lot easier on my pocketbook and all of ours I'm sure yeah. yep so um, have you guys had any trouble with with your crates, any? Delbert, Dan? I've had a little bit. I haven't had any trouble. Dan's oh, I'm hard on stuff. Dan's, Dan's hard on <laughs> stuff. But. <laughs> but to be fair, some of, some of the stuff he's got is my old stuff that I've run. <laughs> okay. 20 or 30 shows, and then we put them in his car, yeah, so yeah. his stuff give, is... Give it to Dan. See some of it was self-inflicted. We, had, we, had, we <laughs> dropped a valve on one, and it always happens when you're running good. I was, I was leading, dropped a valve. They had a retainer brake, but... They've since changed the valve spring setup on it to a beehive, and they're much, much easier to work mm -hmm. on, and much better parts. So you don't have those issues anymore. But that was an older motor. And we got all we could get out of it. But <laughs> if you could tear it up, I could tear it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've, we've had some, we've had some crates. We've got 120 shows out of. So, yeah. I mean, when you can mm -hmm. spend six grand around 120 nights, and I mean our. Uh, when we bought it, the plan was run it till it broke. So that's, you know, we didn't really worry too much about it. So compared that to back when you had the open motor, um, how many nights would you run it before you'd have to take it apart? And oh, I mean, it just depends. But, you, you know, you had way more than that in it. And usually a freshen up, most of the times you could end up, if you took it someplace, you were going to have six grand and getting it freshened up yeah. pretty easy. And yeah. I know Don and them did their own stuff, so it was, but I'm sure it's still, it you know, all adds like, up. I mean, and, and the direction that everybody was going, our open motor program wasn't at the level as the open motor programs back east. Uh, wide bore motors, billet blocks, stuff that Kelly Bone used to have 
freshen that thing up, you could probably get two crates for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. Dan, correct me if I'm wrong here. You kind of started, didn't you start in a sport mod? Well, was, it, was that? I mean, I'm sure you raced something else before. Yes, that. yes, and no. Uh, I started originally in a late model back when I was 18, and then I took a long time off. Um, I wrecked one of Dad's car in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma and they City pretty much said that was it. <laughs> I got demoted back to crew. Uh, when I come back, I started in a sport mod at Minneapolis and, and, and ran there for a couple of years. Well, let's face it, late model stuff to get into and go the first time around, don't you think? It's one of those deals where we've always had a lot of cars, uh -huh. and, and we've always had parts laying around, and I put a car together, and I wanted to run it, and then we figured out that that car was the fastest of the bunch, so I didn't get to run that car very often. Oh, okay. uh, Dad got it, so I got to run his new car, and then I tore it up, and that's pretty much the end of that. <laughs> I think I remember that. Yeah, I mean, the crate deal, running the crate, he had a crate in his sport mod, and I think it really helped him a lot with the late model deal, because it's a momentum type deal, and you know, we've been messing with this car quite a bit, and we've, I think we've got away from where we need to be, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it back. I mean, we were close not long ago at Salina, a couple weeks ago, he was pretty decent, and then we got, we traveled, we went to Dodge City and run an NCRA show, and I think Hayes, and somehow we got a tire we got a 55 that was mixed in with 21s Ooh. we'd bought new so he <laughs> he raced a few nights on a 55 on the right rear and we just kept changing the car trying to make it better and didn't realize we even owned wow. a 55 but, <laughs> yeah. so we got to get back to where we were at and it's just taking us a little bit but. and some of it's the tracks change a lot too a few weeks ago at salina it was a hard slick racetrack and i seem to like that style of racing better i mean hayes hard slick I like that Wichita when it slicks off I like that when it gets a little texture to it or, or a little character to it it just doesn't suit my driving style and what I look for out of a car I think it gets too rigid for the track conditions and, and some of that's just me I've got to be willing to adapt to an older style setup and I'm hard-headed so <laughs> I, I always want to be right on the edge and get the most out of, of my car and I think when you throw a hole in the mix my car gets airborne pretty easy it likes to hop up the racetrack and not stay in its own lane. Then I bounce into other people and they're mad at me. And <laughs> you gotta go through the apology tour of the pits and hope you don't get punched. <laughs> the apology tour. <laughs> apology tour, huh? Yeah, we've all had to do that at some point. <laughs> well, guys, we're fast running out of time for this segment. We're gonna have to take a pit stop here, but uh, we're gonna come back and do another one here in a minute. And I know we haven't got a chance to get to everything we want to talk about, so it goes by pretty quick. But uh, that's going to do it for this segment, and uh, we'll be back after this pit stop.